up y'all welcome to the hill my name is Nick and I have been doing this little show here for almost a year now I can't believe we have over 200 episodes and we are going on our second uh, season and I still start a show with my phone on and the voice on loud which creates an echo I should know better than that Hey, listen, a uh, huge shout out to Raceline Wheels just came on. They are the official wheel of the On the Hill with Nick show. Huge shout out to Greg Mulkey, um, Alan, all the guys over at marketing have been great, have been so welcoming, and uh, just want to give those guys a huge shout out. Also want to thank uh, our other sponsors, Dano, Dano's Cages. Um, you, I have seen that man take some tumbles in his chassis and they just take a beating after beating after beating that guy definitely tests his equipment that's for sure that's for sure dano's cages y'all our uh media sponsors uh eagle eye productions high octane films black dog photography d pass photography thank you guys so much for what you do and uh you know i i, I definitely wouldn't have the the type of um footage the type of media that i have without those guys um rock life off road got a ton of drivers to include dan the man dan uh dan carter dan carter racing so excited to see him coming out in the wonder bread buggy again this year um so gonna be gonna be a great time down in texas speaking of uh race teams cash LaCroix, racing step back on board this year to support this this show uh huge shout out to cash his dad john and and everybody uh that supports cash they are great uh for the sport huge shout out to those guys um an another one too you know there's, there's a lot of folks that that like to donate like to do what they can for the show and uh i always like to even mention them even though they may not uh care to be mentioned nick reich reich racing uh, you, if you race with or follow the Outlaw series, 
Uh, you've probably seen him racing with them. Um, he, uh, great family for the sport. Huge supporter of the show and, and what we do here. So want to give a huge shout out to Nick and uh, everybody in, from the Reich family. Let's see here. We got Jim Pulley, Nick Hill joining us. Derek Talent, Jed Harper in the house. Jed, how are you, sir? Damon Sutherland, Jamie Jones, Jaden Vanek. Jaden Vanek, where are you watching from, sir? I I, uh, I knew a Chris Vanek in the military. Drew Williams, Darren Disney, Eric Bar or Barnett, Bob Meadows joining us, Mandy Lowry. What's up, y'all? Shelby St. Clair says, what's kicking chicken? Christopher Billadu watching. Hope to see you at some races this year, sir. Chris Rose, Jamie Jones, Brian McCand McCandless. I'm, uh, I'm saying that right, Brian. I'm sorry. Sam Ball, what's up, brother? Dana Norwood Brown, Nick Reich joining us, Roland Kirkus, Duke Webb, Jed Harper, Darren Carter. Well, listen, let's get this kicked off, man. We are literally, uh, we are what? I'm, I'm leaving in, let's say, Wednesday. So uh, I'm going to say I'm, I'm leaving in about 36 hours, give or take. I'm leaving first thing Friday morning. So I'll be there for. The UTV racing in the afternoon. I fly into Dallas Fort Worth. I'm uh, gonna hook up with photographer Jeffrey Walson Hume and then head right to the park. Um, if you've been following the sport at all, you have seen a ton of folks dropping little tidbits of information, talking about their builds, talking about where they're at as far as prep work for the you know the up and coming race season. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, Justin Holt from Reject Fab put it well. He said, you know, I love this time of year. It's almost like, uh, you know, watching flowers bloom in the springtime, if you will. You know what I mean? I know that's kind of poetic, but but that's, that's the way it is. These guys work their tails off, not only in the shop, wrenching, busting knuckles on, on their own rigs uh, for those that do, but also... Um, you know, they are busting their humps in their nine to five jobs. You got to realize none of these guys are like independently wealthy yet. We're hoping to change that. That'd be cool. Give, give them some help. But, uh, yeah, man, these guys have got to bust their hump outside of the shop as well at their nine to five. So now is, is a, a great time of year because we're seeing all of that paid off and, and, um, you know, we had an instance last year where Timmy Cameron came out with Menace, brand new buggy, all kinds of footage of him tearing it up, getting seat time. And what does he do? The first hill out, bro. He goes out and he rolls that sucker over on, over on its right hand side on the first hill. You know, things, all, all of everything that was up until that point, I mean, that if you could have seen how that just rolled off his back, man, if you could have seen how a champion takes a hit like that, uh, it was, it was no more apparent that that morning in Bridgeport, Texas at the bottom of Hill one, uh, unbelievable. It was like one of the first few runs too. Uh, he aired it out the first hill ooze and ahs from the crowd. And then he gets to the first turn and he, and he, uh, just gently lays it over on its side and can't correct it you know so but the the hard work and everything that goes up into that point is is worth the ride it's worth the trip and and uh we're gonna get to hear one of those stories from start to finish I, i'm stoked i was talking to him before we started but start to finish we're gonna we're gonna talk about this so without further ado let's bring him on mr charlie brown jr charlie how are you sir good how are you I am well. I am well. I heard the uh, crown and coke is flowing well. Crown and tea tonight, but okay, all right, close yeah. enough. Yeah, not in my house either. I'm drinking water. <laughs> drinking water. Well, listen, man. Uh, I I know you probably heard my little intro there, and uh, I want to first of all thank you. You probably have a ton more other things that you could be doing besides <laughs> talking to us. Uh, tonight, but I want to thank you for taking the time out, hanging out with us. Uh, we've got 30, 40 people in here. A pretty cool feeling to to know that 
you know, we are looking forward to seeing you guys back out on the hills. Uh, not not as much as you guys, I'm sure, but but uh, it's thanks, it, thanks for having me. We're, I'm sure uh, you know we watch your show weekly, so we're ready to get that kicked off too. Yeah, I know it. I love that y'all can be a part of that too, man. Sean Cross hit me up uh, talking about how he was mentioned in the in the show, um, the Sermon on the Hill, the other the other day on Monday, and I'm like, are you kidding me, Sean? Like, of course, dude. You you guys are part of it, man. It, this is all all part of the same, you know, the same family. It's, 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 there's no yeah. better, no other way I can really explain it. You know, that's how yeah. we always, that's how we have always said, uh, Jed says, well, I'm having a crown of Coke since Charlie is on tonight. There you go. See, yeah. I told you the crown of Coke is flowing. I knew I heard that somewhere. I just a little bit ago. Good, so. good. See, that's the other thing too, man, is, you know, we do have Jed on the show and he's part of it just, uh, it, it's, yeah. it's never ending. It's limitless. I love it. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Uh, let's see, Brian, Nickel, and Kenneth Cozine watching with us. Uh, Shelby St. Clair says, uh, in what free time? Yeah, yeah, I hear you. Uh, oh, J oh I, I know what he's talking about. Jamie Jones said, Shelby St. Clair, when are you going to start a fantasy a fantasy bouncer league? That would be crazy. That would be a first. I, I've, I've never heard of anything like that. That would be crazy. Yeah. I, I don't uh, I don't know how that would happen. I, I would like to see that on paper. Uh, Jamie Jones says thirty minutes on the pooper in the morning. Well, hey, I'm glad I we can spend our mornings together. You know, <laughs> if that's what you're talking about. Uh, all right. Well, um, Charlie, you you had a rookie season. Would you say last year? Uh, yeah. Came out with a. Uh, your first buggy that you've ever built, not by no means. And, and we've, we've had Charlie on the show before. So if you'd like to hear more about Charlie and what he was doing before all the rock bouncing stuff, you know, we can revert you back to that episode. Um, it's saved on our YouTube channel and right here on, on this Facebook page. So go back and check that out. Uh, Charlie tells us all about drag racing and all the other stuff that you've been into prior to rock bouncing. Um, you start the season out with a stout buggy, dude. Two and a half ton Rockwell buggy. Not too many of those out there, but you had, you know, a well built motor, well built chassis. Uh, tell us about it. Uh, yeah, I built the buggy I raced last year. You know, I didn't, I didn't build that to race. I had no intentions of racing every race. Um, I built it to trail ride, drink beer, have fun, um, and then I went to one race and was hooked. Um, just how welcoming everybody was, and um, just the whole atmosphere, I, I was hooked. And um, ran it, and uh, you know, honestly, I, I had no clue like what I was up against until um, Hawk Pride. Uh, at Hawk Pride. Um, which I don't even know. I, don't, I couldn't even tell you what race. Maybe third or fourth race in. And um, after Hawk Pride, we was up at the trailer, and I was parked by Schuessler, and um, we were just hanging out and drink, cooking dinner and stuff. And he's like, hey, you, you get in my buggy and take it for a spin. And and so I did. <clears throat> I took it out and drove it, and I was I was blown away. Um, so let's, blown away. Let's, then, let's tell them what he's working with, first of all, so, so they know – so everybody watching at home kind of knows some specs. Uh, you know, you were going from your trail rig that you said you built it for, yeah. pretty much, which had what what for a motor? It had a it had a this old junkyard five three is what Krug would say. Um, <laughs> had a pro charger on it. I had a good transmission, two and a half ton Rockwells. Uh, but when I built it, I had no weight goal in mind whatsoever. I mean, it was just. Yeah, I wanted it to hold up. Um, I've only driven one other buggy prior, and that was, you know, very short. Um, so I hadn't had a lot of buggy seat time, you know. And um, but when I built that, I just wanted it to look good. I wanted it to ride good, and um, I really didn't plan on racing it. You know, it was. I mean, yeah, it was loud and it was cool, and 
it made some power, but it I, I learned really, really fast. It was not a race rig by no means. Yeah. So, uh, and, and it did, dude. I, I love the light bar. I, I did love the look of of that buggy. It was it was definitely a, a well built trail rig, exactly what you're talking about. Um, but then, so you get into Schistler's buggy, right? And I remember this. I was at the top of the hill. We were loading RCs into the back of my rental minivan, and yeah. uh, and I see you tearing up and down, you know, tearing up up uh, up and down, kind of in the parking lot, air, air camping area, ish. Tell us about now. What has Matt got compared to what you were? playing with um, you were he's got with. a you know he's I mean, everybody knows bad influence i mean it's a big motor top of the line everything no budget build and um i drove it and it i mean i, I was it opened my eyes i mean i i knew right then and there that i, I wasn't even in the ballpark i mean yeah i i, I was proud of my buggy and it's nice and it it, it, it was a, it was a good trail rig but it, it, it's not a race car and then so that same night that same, I mean, right afterwards, I come back and Holt was there, and uh, Misfit was already on the trailer, and he's like, "Well, get in there and go drive mine." And I went out and drove his, and the same thing. I mean, it was, I was blown away on on the difference. I mean, it was night and day difference. I mean, my buggy, I could compare it to racing a Ranger, and their buggies were, you know, Razor XP Turbo S's. You know, I mean, that that big of a difference. Yeah. And um, that's. So we come back from Hawk Pride, and um, I talk to Holt, I mean, damn near every day on Facebook. And uh, I came back, and I called my metal supplier and ordered uh, a bunch of tubing. I was just going to start building another buggy, and then me and Holt started talking back and forth. And uh, originally, I don't know who it was for, but he was building this chassis for somebody else, and they decided they wanted a two-seater. And uh, it was, I think it was Thursday night, and I told Holt, I said, hey, you got till 7 in the morning to tell me if, you know, if that chassis is for sale, I'll buy it. If not, I'm going to the steel yard, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring home some tubing. And uh, he texted me that morning and said, hey, it's yours if you want it. And I'm not going to lie, it was a struggle. I mean, yeah, I don't build them for a living, but I like being able to say, you know, I did mine from top to bottom. And, uh, but it was, it was bare bones. I mean, it was a bare bones chassis. Um, it wasn't even fully welded. I don't think Justin sold anybody else uh, a chassis yet. Um, but I went ahead and did it. You know, when I drove his, I really liked it. It just it just felt nimble. I felt like I could drive it anywhere I wanted to. And um, I've been grinding on it. I mean, it's I'm about a month behind in my opinion, but we got it ready to go. So. Yep. Uh, okay. So you called it. You named it uh, Airtime. Uh, hang time, hang time, hang yeah. time. Uh, you want to give us uh, the reasoning for the name? Uh, it's time to hang with all the headers. I hope so. We'll see. I got a lot of I got a lot to learn driving wise, but uh, I got no excuses when it comes to buggy for buggy now. So yeah, yeah, yeah. No excuses. So um, do you want to? Can we nerd out a little bit and tell us some of the tech about what you're working with now, drivetrain yeah. wise? Yeah. Um, so Travis Rhodes at Rhodes Diff, even before I started building, I had, you know, my old buggy and, um, I called Travis and was going to just, I was going to, originally I was going to ditch the Rockwells and, uh, just put some 14 bolts under it. And, uh, so talking with Travis, uh, he, um, you know, he's giving me some prices and different options and stuff. And then we. Yeah, I think he come down to the shop, and I cooked him a dinner, and a steak dinner, and we drank some beer, and he talked me into 80s, and originally when we uh, when we first started, I mean, I was going to pay full price, uh, full price, you just, you know, it is what it is, and uh, we kind of became friends, and uh, he, he, he really helped me out, and I, honestly, like, he took a lot of financial pressure off me, I mean, I, I got some money invested in it, but if it wasn't for him, I mean, he he allowed me, he pretty much sponsored me, I, I'm not going to say what, but he, he sponsored me a whole lot, and it allowed me to change, uh, I changed transmissions, I, I changed uh, the power adder, I mean, it, it opened up the door a lot for me, so. Wow, very cool. But, we, uh, but originally, I was going to do the 14s and the old buggy, and once I drove those other two, I was like, no, I got to. 
I got to shed some pounds. I mean, that thing was just, it was just way too heavy. So. Okay. So that, that was the, 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 that was the whole reasoning for go going eighties was the savings and weight. Yeah. I mean, I just, I was, you know, my old buggy, I, every single race I went to, I broke an axle. Now yeah. I was just 16 spline. I was running the chromoly ones and, um, those axles come out of a trail rig that I had very shortly, but I, I beat, I mean, I beat on it hard and I never broke anything. And that's why I was like, well, you know, I want to try it in that. But, you know, the first Southern Rock race I went to was Dirty Turtle and I broke an axle just leaving the starting line. Um, and it, it sucked. I mean, it, I literally after the first hill, I had to change an axle. Every single race I went to, I would change an axle after the first run. And then, so I, the second run, I didn't get to walk the hills with everybody else. You know, I was working on my junk and that's when I was like, okay, I, you know, I want to, I want to put some, some real axles and something that's going to hold up. But, that's so crazy, man. Cause I, I remember growing up being in, in the trail rigs and, and stuff. And, and if you wanted the ultimate bomb proof, you went with two and a half ton Rockwells, but, but ju you're talking about just leaving the starting line. You know, yep. that is. Yeah, that, that, I, I, I wasn't Hawk Friday. It was uh, Dirty Turtle. The Dirty first Turtle. Yeah, my yeah. Broken, broke an axle leaving the starting line. Yeah, that's crazy. So, uh, roads, diffs, I mean, they are huge in the game. I, I know they uh, have a lot to do with Larry Krogh as well. Yeah. Um, I'm sure you've been keeping up with Larry and, and all those guys. That, that's what I love the camaraderie between drivers. I mean, y'all are competitors, but y'all, y'all. I mean, you know, you've got you got drivers that you're going to be racing against in here right now. You know, that are watching along with us, and and uh, to include Travis Rhodes. What's up, Travis? He had he said you had cup holders in in your uh, race rig last year. Yeah, I did. I did. I need to add one to that thing. <laughs> you should. Just jump the old trail race. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, me and me and Krog have become pretty good friends. Uh, you know, he he reached out to me wanting some LS advice. I shouldn't say that, but uh, you know, he's 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 thinking about jumping ship, and I don't blame him. Yeah. 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 He's already putting one in the dump truck, right, Larry? Yeah. I know. Yeah, that's. That is a stage nine dump truck cam in that. And Krogh was the one that got me pointed in the right direction. He was doing a lot of LS research. So. Yeah, I'm sure he did. Chris Hickman joining us. Peace, Pete Rittenauer. What's up, y'all? Uh, got uh, Charlie Brown Jr. on the show here. We are talking about hang time. And uh, I I'm excited, dude. So we uh, let's talk about the motor. Let's talk about the motor for a minute. So the motor has a uh, small block Ford heads, custom cut, the fit a junkyard 4.8. It has the uh, dump truck cam spec by Larry Crow himself. Um, there's just a little old whipple on top of it. I mean, there ain't, there ain't much to talk about there. Um, I'm the most the the thing that I'm most excited about on that motor is the Howl power steering pump. So that's what I'm really looking forward to because yeah. I fought steering issues all the time last year and everybody I talked to about the house stuff was, I'm, I'm really excited about that. I've ripped it around the yard just a little bit, but, um, I haven't got to fully, you know, feel it out, but. So front and rear steer? Yeah. Front okay. And rear steer. What's running the rear? Do you have two pumps or? It's, yeah, it's a, I got a house pump for the rear too. Okay. So. So two yep. pumps on the two pumps on the. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I was gonna do the electric, but uh, I was just trying to save as much weight as I could. Yeah, so. I understand. Uh, Daniel says three quarter three quarter dump truck cam, yo. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Daniel, that the motor's supposed to go in the cat eye. That the motor that's supposed to go in the cat eye. Was that the uh, Daniel, Daniel Brummett? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, that was a bouncer motor. I bought a truck. I traded a patio for a truck that he had, and I was going to build a pre-runner. I had my bouncer done, and I went to KOH last year and was going to build a pre-runner, and then once I started racing, it was just it's on the back burner. But, Daniel, yeah. I will say, now that that's done, that is, I've already talked to Dana, and I'm, I'm ready to start on something else now. So pre-runner's coming. 
Shelby says, Crow just text me and said his Ford has something for you. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah. Jed Harper, you best get the cup holders in before s'more trip. Uh, they'll be in there for that. Don't worry. <laughs> Lindsay James, excuse me while I go get my boots. Shit's getting deep. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Uh, uh, Kenneth Cozine says, how steering is definitely the bee's knees for sure. Um, that That's not the first time I've heard that either. Yeah. You know, I, I've... And, and I have also heard from drivers like Brandon Davis and stuff who say that steering, once it's... Once you get it down... It's so, it's just so nice to not have to worry about yeah. it, you know? Yeah. You know, I had no experience with the old buggy, and I mean, I guess it rode good. I never, I never felt anything in my back, or it never bottomed out. I mean, just, I couldn't complain suspension-wise, but the steering was slow. It didn't steer good, um, and I, you know, I didn't know. I thought... Oh, this is what a rock bouncer drove like. You yeah, know, I, I had no clue until I drove those other buggies. And when I say it opened my eyes, it opened my eyes. I mean, I I knew right then and there that I I wasn't even in the I wasn't even in the game. Yeah, you know, that's what led to this. Yeah, yeah. Um, would you say that you guys are knocking on the door, probably having the highest horsepower out of all the reject buggies so far? Uh, I. I don't know. I honestly, I could, I could care less what that thing makes on the dyno. Um, I don't think horsepower wins races. Um, I, I don't know. I'm gonna dyno it tomorrow. Um, I just, I wanted it to steer good. I wanted it to handle. I wanted it to break. That's, I could care less how much horsepower it makes. I mean, yeah, I want it to run good. That's, I just want it to run good. Yeah. Good, clean, crisp power. That's all I want. Yeah. I have no clue what it'll make. So. Yep, I respect that. Um, uh, do, are you? Do you believe that you know having that wheel speed there uh, is will make a difference? I mean, I, I've seen wheel speed pull some guys up hills, man. That that they would have yeah. had no no chance if it wasn't for wheel speed. Yeah, you know that's like the Rockwells have a six seventy two ring of pinion in them, their bull gear, whatever you want to call it, and. I think that was a big problem. My my transfer case gear, I had a one nine eight transfer case gear in that buggy and just to get it just to get some mile per hour out of it and you know, we popped the converter. Um, this this thing right here, I mean it is it is it, you know, it's built to go SRS racing. I mean they, I'm excited for I'm every everything about it, the gear ratios and the Axles, the uh, transfer case, I mean, everything. I mean, it's its night and day. That I hate talking. I'm not talking bad about Mole Buggy, but, you know, it's this is this is built for this. Yeah. So I, I got high expectations. But like yeah. I said, I, I got a lot to learn. So. You, you had, I mean, you had a, a totally different mindset this time last year. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, you know, you, it's funny. Like, you always... You always think more, you know more than you actually really do. And you know, when I built that last year, I thought, man, this thing's badass. It's it's awesome. And then you you get out and actually, you know, run it, and you, you it just opens your mind. You know what I mean? And it's I don't know. And I say that about this. I couldn't imagine what you know what I'm going to build two years from now, or three years from now, or next year. Who knows? You know, it's only going to get better and better. You know, I that's why I know that's why Timmy built something. You know, every even this buggy right here, there's there's things that I would change and I would do different. You know, the next one will not be like this. There's there's already things I haven't even got to drive it yet, and there's already things that I would do different. You know, yeah. from this one. Yeah, and dude, I, I've seen some of the pictures, man. You you have got some ingenuity built into this thing. That's for sure. You can definitely tell there's years of racing experience built into into that so uh, you know i i can't wait for people to get out and to be able to see it i mean i've seen pictures i can't wait to see it in person but uh you know i can't wait for people to see this and and uh you know i'm yeah. I'm, I'm excited i'm excited um what what uh, transmission are you running i want to a power glide okay here. okay uh i'm excited for that too okay i want to a power glide. it's an fti 
power glide. A uh, local guy here, um, Tim Dacus, Eggers Edger, Transmission. I think this is probably the third or fourth transmission I bought from him. Uh, he he takes care of me. He does he does me good. Um, I he's uh, when I was drag racing, I used all PTC stuff, and and uh, when I went to uh, that last buggy, I went to an STI Turbo 400. And I liked it, and it held together. And then I went to their billet bolt together converter, and so we put a—I don't even know what stage it is. It's it's pretty built. Stage four or five uh, FTI glide. So um, I'm I'm really excited to run it and see. I like just the two speed. So. Yep. And then the case transfer case. Yeah, it's SFI case FTI. Oh. Yeah, there's no there's no firewall in this buggy. The I mean, it's got a deck panel, is what I call it, on the passenger side, where I got a gauge and my switch is mounted. Yep. But I mean, uh, hopefully they don't catch on fire or nothing like that. So yep. I, uh, I could probably bring up some pictures. Um, uh, so Dana 80s, front rear steer. What else am I? What else am I? So uh, I know the circumstances of why you came uh, to to own a reject buggy, but I mean, you got to admit. Reject has got some stuff working for them because yeah. they've got drivers yeah. constantly that are on the podium, and yeah. and uh, you know tell tell us about tell us about going in. You know you talk about hang time, and that's and and you want to hang with the big boys now. I mean some of the biggest names, Danny Smith, you know Liberty Two. Yeah. Prior to that was Liberty One. I mean you know uh, Modern Warfare. Um, you know, Jay uh, Jay Stortz is going to have a reject buggy. Um, yeah. You know, you know, reject family is is no joke. I, I see those guys, man, and they and the reject family is is a, a legit thing. It, it definitely is. Yeah. Um, but y'all, you know, <laughs> you got some of the baddest drivers in the circuit racing out. Yeah. There. You know, when I drove, so when I drove Bad Influence. You know, I've had some high horsepower drag cars, and you know they're a lot lighter. But when I drove that influence, I mean that thing, it had some power. Like it, I, I was blown away how much power it had. But when I drove Justin's buggy, it just felt light. It felt nimble. I felt like I could drive it anywhere. I, you know, I it, it just went. I mean, it it, it steered good. Everything was good, and that's why. Uh, I went ahead and, you know, did the reject chassis, and of course, you know, me and Holt, the, I'm pretty headstrong, and there was a lot of things, you know, I changed the rear suspension just a little bit, and he's been giving me shit about mounting the coilovers up front, but, you know, I think that's all things that we can tune around, and, and like you said earlier, like I, just from racing, drag racing, dirt track racing, being around it, you know, I have an idea of what's going on, and there was some things that I wanted to do just a little bit different or try. So if it works, you know, great. If not, I'll take credit for it. I mean, yeah. Um, but it, yeah, I'm, I think it's going to work. I'm I'm pretty excited. I'm ready to drive it. I haven't really got to drive it, drive it. I'm ready to put it on the wood. Yeah, and uh, you, you don't have the weather for it right now. If we can no. take a quick break, uh, <laughs> do you want to tell them? How cold it is right there right now? Uh, I think it's probably eight eight to ten degrees right now. Yeah, yeah we normally don't get this cold, but uh, of course, as soon as I get this thing done, you know, I'm I've been looking. I was gonna, I, I need to go drive it. Um, I was gonna go to Disney this weekend. It's cold. I looked at um, AOP, and even down there, it's supposed to be cold Saturday. I talked to Krog about coming out to his house and testing. Um, but it's supposed to be Saturdays, like a high of four, minus 16 at night. So I don't know. I'm either going to go to Krogs house or I'm going to go to Disney, which Disney's only high of 16 Saturday, but I'm just, I'm not going to Texas without driving the same. Yeah. So um, I don't know. I'm going to go somewhere. Yeah. Uh, do What shocks are you running? Uh, it's, it's got a, I bought them from Chris uh, Wizzo, big block, or Diddy's big block race yep. shop. He hooked me up. Uh, he tuned my shocks last year, but I put uh, just some emulsions, uh, emulsion coilovers on it, and then a few and a half inch bypasses on it. Okay. Front and center. Sweet. So he got me the uh, the valve stacks or the uh, shim packs and everything. Told me 
I pulled him apart. I just I didn't know I was going to be able to go out there and have him tune him in. So I pulled him apart, and Dana helped me actually make sure I didn't get sidetracked and put everything in right. And um, we'll see. So, but I haven't I haven't turned any knobs on him yet. So. Uh, these guys are just nonstop. Uh, Timmy Timmy Chuck says four tens. Hell, we're running 373s. Yeah, the, uh, Money Shot definitely has some wheel speed. Uh, let's see. Travis Rhodes, Timmy Chuck, Junkyard 4.8. Had to have them. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, Johnny Gibbs joining us. Larry Crow, dump truck axles to match that dump truck motor. <laughs> That's right. Uh, uh, Sarah Sorensen, good question. Where does Charlie live? I live in Kansas City. Love more Kansas, but um, just outside Kansas City. Yeah. Uh, Wade Goods says, uh, says he'll help. Uh, he says just bring it by the house and he'll test it out for you. Yeah. Appreciate sure that, Wade. Would. Appreciate that. Thanks for always, always uh, helping, Wade. <laughs> uh, Dana says Leavenworth, Kansas. Yeah. Uh, let's see. So anyway. Um, Talked about the shocks, and uh, we talked about you going out and testing and tuning. What else am I missing, man? I feel like there's a big part of the story that we left out. But um, so anyway, we're 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 heading down to Texas. You're gonna drive it before yep. Texas. You, I'm I'm sure if you're like every other driver, you watch footage all the time. You you know what hills and, and such uh, that, that we're probably going to be racing on. As far as I know, it is going to be the same spot um, that we were racing at last year, which did you yeah. make the Texas race race last year? No, okay. I didn't. I, my old buggy fired up till April, April or May. Okay. But no, I've already been saying thing. I lay in bed at night and normally, you know, if I know I'm going somewhere, cause I, I haven't been doing this as long as all the other guys. So, you know, before Dirty Turtle, I was just watching all the Dirty 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 Turtle videos yeah. and Bridgeport. And I, I had that conversation with Crow just the other day. I was like, you know, yeah, I, I haven't jumped it yet. You know, I just I don't know what it's going to do. Yeah. So I'm, I'm a month behind on, in my opinion, I'm a month behind on getting this thing together. And I've been working out of town, so the only real time I got to work on it was on the weekends. So. Monday through Friday was shot, and I'd come back in town Friday night and stay out here, you know, Friday night, Saturday, and Sunday, and I leave Monday. So yeah, yeah, man. See, that's what I was talking about. As far as you guys tell tell these folks real quick what you do for you know your your nine to five. Yeah, I'm just a dumb old concrete guy. I uh, pour concrete out, make it semi flat, and and uh, that's about it, really. No, well, okay. we we do a little bit of construction. And, and all that but uh you know the weather has actually been really good and we've been working non-stop um I, I i this this is the first week it got cold enough and i actually worked monday tuesday trimming out a rim addition i've been doing and um yeah, i mean it literally you know it's it sucks because i get so i'm add so and when i do something i'm all in and it has been killing me to go out of town and sit there and watch TV at night, not have a shop to come down to and work on my stuff, and uh, just knowing I got this buggy, you know, sitting here ready to be done, and got a race coming up, and it's it's killed me. I'm I'm really happy just to be able to have it done and just start fine tuning it and really working on it. But yeah, it's, it's yeah. been a struggle. Uh, so did you have rear steer on the last buggy? Yeah. Okay. I did. Okay. Right. I really considered not doing rear steer on this one just so I could just hang onto the wheel and just focus on going forward. But I did, you know, I wanted something I can grow into more than not have it when I needed it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I've often thought about that and, and uh, I hope to one day uh, soon race and get that feeling, but you really need to trust your harness that you're not gonna, you're not going anywhere. So you, you can just steer. You, you know what I mean, and let the machine do the work. And you know your strap's gonna keep you in. You don't have to hold on. I, I think of that, that kind of thing. You know what I mean when I, when I think about when I do yeah. end up getting in one. And 
what it's going to be I like. I don't have any, the, the only fear that I have in that buggy is hurting my back. I mean, not just that buggy. That's, that's the only fear I have is hurting my back. Um, but, you know, so uh, Hollerwood, which I really like, that was probably one of my favorite courses and um, that all year. But I remember that, that jump over that kind of road or whatever you want to call it, that, that first jump right off the starting line. And uh, I remember walking, walking the course. I don't remember who I was talking to, but – I was like, I just, I don't know if I'm going to jump that. And I'm not, I ain't no bit, you know, I'm, if somebody else says it, I'm going to do it. But I just, I was like, man, my stuff is just so heavy. I don't know. And then I, Daniel Hepley was the first one to hit it. And as soon as, as soon as I seen him clear, I was like, yep, I'm in. I, you know, I'm going to do it. <laughs> I, I didn't, I didn't even second guess it, but you know, I, I don't know. I, I know what you, I know what you're saying. Like, it's just you see that stuff and it's crazy like that's one thing i really like about racing you know hawk pride that you know that big old wall that's not something if you're out trail riding nobody's gonna hit that no. you know nobody's gonna just try to hit that and but when you're in the race course you see 15 20 other guys have whatever you draw hit it you're like you know they did it so i gotta do it yeah. you know it, you don't have any I, I have zero second guesses on on that stuff um you know, when you, once you see somebody else do it, you do it. But that, the only the only fear I have is hurting my back in that thing. Yep. But I don't know. I'm not gonna not do something. You know, that's not in the back of my mind. You know, once you strap in and you're waiting on the starting line, I mean, you don't have time to think about anything like that. But that's that's the only fear I have is hurting my back in it. But I mean, it is what it is, I guess. Yeah. Uh, what seat are you running? Do what? What's what seat? Yeah, it's a Ultra Shield. Is that? It's a, like a dirt track seat. That's the same seat I had in my dirt track car. And, okay. You know, I, you read online, like, I was going to put a suspension seat in yep. it. And I don't know, you hear those guys say that they got too much too much play in them and you hurt your back that way. I, I don't think there's a right or wrong. Yeah. You're not. <laughs> I don't think your body's supposed to to be strapped into something like that and doing what we're doing. But yeah, no. no I like no. the yeah. seat. I feel safer in it, you know, and I hang my seats. I don't, I don't solid mount them at the bottom. I, you know, in my mind, I, I hang them on the side. So maybe if you're lucky, the seat, the bolts or aluminum or whatever stretch a little bit, but yeah. I don't know. That's, we'll find out, I guess. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, Miss Sorensen asking who or or were you or are or were you the most excited to meet in the in the rock bouncer world last year? Um, you know, like literally all these guys. I mean, it, it's taken me ten years to like take that step forward to build one of these. Like I've I've always, you know, you you watch YouTube. I I, I remember Showtime. You know, like, I was addicted right then and there. And I've watched and I've always said I'd never build one until I can build one without a budget. And I realized that's never going to happen. And that's that's when I started building that thing, you know, my old buggy. And um, But it, it is kind of crazy. Like, honestly, everybody that races, even Timmy, I mean, they're, they're, they're normal people. You know, Krogue, Krogue Show. They're normal guys. You know what I mean? And it, it, that's what I really like about it is, we go to these races and these guys talk to you, you know, you watch them, you, you know, every single driver, buggy, you know, you know, all of them and you race and, and these guys are, they're just like me and you, they, they'll talk to you, they'll help you, they'll, you know, it's cool as shit, you know, me and, me and Krogue talk all the time, you know, yeah. like it's, it. you watch these guys forever and then they're not, you know, they're not superheroes, they're really not, they're just, they they got jobs just like you know us and they're they're normal people and that's I don't know it's 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 definitely cool that's a good question yeah uh, Timmy Cameron man s sat on here and talked to me one night for two and a half hours dude and he he is just a a good old boy who, who wasn't afraid to pick up a welder a grinder a torch and whatever else and and just build stuff that he had an interest in building you know and that's yeah. that is literally the start of TC racing. And look where he is now, you know, you know, one of the most well-known off-road racing individuals this 
you know, the, the side of the, the beginning of the internet, you know what I mean? With the advent yeah. of YouTube and stuff like that. Like, you know, he's, he's one of the biggest names there is. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, it does, like, I, I really like, I respect anybody that's willing to have the balls to either build it or buy it or do it. Cause it doesn't matter if you've got a $10,000 a year race budget or a hundred thousand, if you're out there racing, there's not a single person that's not putting their all into it. I mean, they're they're doing everything they can with what they have to, to run, and I you know I respect that. Yeah, absolutely, dude. Not, I, I mean, I know we say it uh, so often, and and uh, I I swear I don't work it into the show, but but this the whole atmosphere, man. If if you're watching right now or, or later on down the line, uh, you know, just get out to a race. Come meet some of these folks. You know these these people are so interesting, and they have so much to offer. Not just in in, in the racing world, but you know, uh, uh, like Timmy Chuck's talking about your your world famous uh, chick or fajitas, right? Yeah. I mean, dude, th we could go back to the campfire and and talk about way more stuff than rock bouncing. It's not usually yeah. what happens, but but you know what I'm saying. Like I, I've sat around some campfires with Jake Pike and you know Black Dog Photography and and and. The high octane films, you know what I mean, and just just sat around and being good old red blooded Americans, dude. I, uh, you know, like so, I drag race for a couple of years, and I, I was highly addicted to it. I had to quit, but like it, it was pretty selfish. I mean, it's drag racing people are I don't, they're stuck up, man. It's like one for you know, you're all on your own. I mean, you might meet a guy or two that's good, and, and I've met some good people, don't get me wrong, but when it comes down to racing, like, it is just hug hug, you know, dirt track racing, like, you might have two or three friends that you, you talk to and, and you help you out, but I tell every single body that this, hands down, I don't know if it's because you're not racing door to door, you know, you're, you're racing yourself, you're not racing Timmy, you're not racing, you know, anybody else, like, you are racing yourself. And it's just a whole different atmosphere. I mean, you know, I my favorite thing about a racing is getting there Friday, hanging out Friday night, racing Saturday. You know, the racing takes two anywhere from twenty to sixty second runs, and then afterwards, that's that's when the fun happens. Yeah. I mean, uh, hanging out and just drinking and and just having a good time, yeah. hands down. Yeah, and it's a safe place too, man. You know, people people have a good time and and. And as they should, because they work hard, like I said, they work hard throughout the week and they, they absolutely should let loose. Uh, but it, but there's kids around, man, I've never seen a, a situation that was like, eh, I don't know if this guy is really good for this group. You know, they seem to weed themselves out pretty quickly, you know, yeah. and uh, or, or get asked to leave, you know, if there's kids around. Um, but uh I, I really do. I really do enjoy all of this, man. And, and uh, you know, we are, we keep talking about it. It is literally a week away, give or take a couple of days, leaving from Texas. Yeah. Um, when are you, are you going to be there for the, the UTD racing on Friday? Yeah, I'll be there. Okay. All right, cool. I'll, I'm, yeah. I'm flying. My buddy John, he built, a, uh, he built a Razor Bouncer this year. I don't know if he's going to try to come or not, but uh, I know he's wanting to, but he's a superintendent for a pretty big company on a pretty big project, so he can't get away a lot, so okay. hopefully he'll be down there. Yep. Very cool. Um, Timmy Chuck says, I hated, I hated the drag racing crowd. Yeah. You know, I met some good guys doing it. You know, I, I really did. I mean, it's just, man, it's cutthroat, boy. I mean, it's... I could tell you story after story on why I quit drag racing, and uh, you know I had a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun doing it, I, and I was addicted. I mean, I, hands down, I was addicted to it. But when I'm when I'm in, I'm all in, and no different than this. Same thing. I mean, I'm I do what I have to do to make things work and and be able to do the things I can. But uh, you know, it was I don't know. It's a whole different vibe for sure. Well, we were. We were street racing, and it was just, it was a lot of bullshit. It really was. Yeah. The dirt, the dirt track racing, honestly, for the bang for your buck, I don't think you can beat dirt track racing. You know, there's, it's so close and available, but 
same thing. You just you don't you, you come you're racing and it's fun, but you know it's just not the same atmosphere as these things. Yeah. You know, and yeah. I, I, I'm not gonna say I'd never do it again, but I can't see myself getting out of this yeah. anytime soon. Yeah. Uh, Miss Sarah says, "Tell us about the moment you decided you wanted to uh, race. Was that D Dirty Turtle, uh, or?" Um, you know, so I've always, you know, watch YouTube. I've always wanted to do it. Um, when I built my old buggy, I built it to trail ride and just, you know, Memorial Weekend we go to S'more, Fourth of July, Labor Day, you know, big meat run. Um, I've just, I've always wanted one, and when I built it, you know, I was kind of, you know, multi-purpose, I was, I just thought, I really didn't know there was a difference between a race car and a trail buggy, and there is, so, um, the first race I went to was, uh, Outlaw Race at, uh, Flat Nasty, which is like five and a half, six hours away, and, uh, I went to one race, and here we are, yeah. I mean, it, it was over right then, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. let's see, Jed Harper says, Sean, how everything he cooks is awesome. Man, I, you know, we, I, I don't want to give away too much, but, but you and I have some plans later on in the year. We're going to be hanging yeah. out, spending a little bit of extended time together. So, uh, I'm, I'm excited to try some of all this cooking that I'm hearing about now. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm, I, uh, I'll go, I'll tell everybody my, so my secret recipe for fajitas is uh it's all in the spices and you gotta have salt you gotta have pepper you gotta have garlic and then you gotta have a whole lot of none your damn business <laughs> uh let's see lindsey james what angle did you set your seat at good question uh i don't know it's comfortable comfortable okay <laughs> yeah. i'll buy that uh let's yeah. see curtis hazard joining us uh, Anthony Yon, Larry is not normal. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's not like me and Larry. I think, like me and Larry really hit it off. I'd say at Rush, and uh, I, I will say if you look at Larry's Snapchat, you can see like how many snaps you send like total in your history. And I was his is like abnormal. His is like a fourteen year old girl. Like I'm talking like a hundred thousand Snapchats. And I'm just doing quick math, and I'm like, dude, you're talking like an average of 200 snaps a day. And so, but me and Larry started Snapchat, and then it turned into like every Friday when I'd head home from Lake, I'd call him. And then now it's like getting routine, but I know it's because he's scared to death of that little old 48 LS motor, and he just keeps asking me all these questions about, hey, do you really think I should LS swap it? And, well, fuck yeah, bud. Dude, he he told me to get Snapchat, and then he's never he's never Snapchatted me. Oh Jesus! Yeah, we we go back and forth like it's <laughs> it's a battle. And then I've been doing the whole meme thing. I mean, I could, I could go on and on for that. Yeah, but, yeah no, I like Larry. I I said I was I was really considering running out to his house Saturday. He's we went out there for the lawnmower race, and yep. he's got a he's got a nice setup and. A lot of good hills and be a good spot to test, but it's just going to be so cold that I don't, I don't know, man. I, I don't know. How good can you really to... test when it's that cold? You know, it's not ideal conditions. It's not conditions that you're going to be yeah. running in, even in Texas. It's not it no, be that cold. It'll be I, cold. It'll be cold I in gotta, Texas, y'all. Yeah, I know. I got to get some sort of seat time loads. I'm going somewhere this weekend. I just don't know where yet. Yeah, I got you. Uh, let's see. Pete Rittenauer says it took me eight years from seeing my first race to almost being in one. So that's pretty cool, Pete. That's pretty cool. Uh, Timmy Chuck says none of this crowd is normal. I I agree. Uh, Sarah Sorensen says Anthony Yacht, none of you are. Yeah, yeah, that, this is true. Uh, Timmy yeah. Chuck Timmy says he hated the drag racing crowd. Uh, Casey Perkins joining us. Casey coming from Harrisburg, Illinois. How are you? Uh, Casey, the owner of uh, Williams Pass, which is where the first ever point one Rock Bouncer race is going to be at. So uh, how are you, Casey? Thank you for joining us. Uh, 
Josh. I think that's uh, the first week or third week of March, March. isn't it? The first point one race. Yeah. yeah. I hate saying it, but I'm not. I'm not going to be there. I. Uh, I don't want to take the fun out of it, and that is Big Meat Run weekend, and I'm going to go have cocktails and climb Viagra and, nice. and just have fun. Nice. I'm, not, I'm not taking the fun out of it. Yeah. So are you going to keep the old buggy for like a trail rig or? No, I sold it. Okay. Uh, I sold it to a friend of mine. It's sitting behind me here. He's getting real close to having it done. Nice. Um, he um, He bought it as a roller, and I've been helping him kind of get it. Get it finished. I told him I got to get this thing done before I can really put some time in on it. But um, yeah, he's his goal is big meat run too. So he's he's about four or five days from firing it up and getting ready for it. So awesome. I'm excited for him too. He's never he's never been in. He's never even ridden in a rock bouncer. So he's he's got his hands full. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the nightmare. Uh, yeah. Josh Passator, will you be racing at Rush? Good question. Yep. Okay. I'll be at Rush. Rush is only, I don't know, four and a half hours from me. Awesome. So, uh, unless he, if Rush Springs, Missouri, I don't know if Kentucky, the Kentucky, that's a, that's a ways away. I don't know. I'm going to run the NRS and I'm going to run the close outlaws and I'm going to run the close point ones, but we'll see. Now, if I go out, you know, next weekend, this thing just lights the world on fire and I feel like I can drive it, I'll probably be at all of them, but. I keep telling myself, don't take the fun out of it. So, okay. yeah, I want to do some trail riding. So, you, okay, yeah, that, I, and I respect that. Uh, you said you're just going to run the NRRS, just, so just those three races plus finals? No, uh, I'm pre registered. Well, yeah, I was going to say, you, you're, you're a seasoned driver, so that's a big commitment financially yeah. Uh, yeah. To, to, to just race one series. So, yeah, no, no, we're going to do all the southern, whatever you want to call it, yeah, southern rock, yeah, central, and north, and we're going to, we're pre registered for all that, yeah, but, yeah. you know, there's, like, outlaw, there's some close, close outlaws, there's some close point ones, um, I'm just not, right now, I'm not going to commit to going racing every weekend, you know, yeah. and that's, last year, we did, you know, I really, I feel like I, I was just so addicted to it, and I liked hanging out with everybody that I didn't. You know, I didn't go trail ride or nothing. I haven't, I haven't been in one of these things as, you know, as long as all the other guys. So yeah. this year, I told myself just run the Southern Rock stuff and yeah. trail ride and just have fun, and we'll see. Yeah. We'll we'll see what happens. Very cool. I I think that's a great game plan, man. Um, let's see. Charles Chuck E. Lafour says no race secrets, but won't share the fajita spices secret either. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's that's that. Cooking's a whole different deal. Whatever you want to know about that, I'll tell you. Dump truck cam, gear <laughs> ratio, yeah, yeah, yeah. All those guys. But cooking, nah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see. Nicole Beckvar says February nineteenth and twentieth is that's we're gonna be live. So be tuned in. Hillside Live will start around one one thirty, I think on. Friday the 19th and then be back live at 10 or 10 30 in the morning on Saturday so it's going to be a full weekend of racing that's for sure yeah I'm excited yeah. I'm ready I wish it was like three weeks out but bring it on is what it yeah. is yeah um yeah yeah I, I there's definitely going to be jumps <laughs> uh we we announced today that eco oh uh, man I'm going to forget the name um Oh, uh, eco. I've seen. Yeah. Anyway, uh, they're they're back on for uh, doing the course this year. So, you know, you'll have yeah, that. Yeah, I told Clyde last year, more jumps, more whoops, downhill. I don't care. Like, I want to, I want to drive that thing as long as I can. You will not hear no bitching from me about yeah. what the course is like. Like, bring it on. Yeah, I I like that too because, like. Um, you know, you, you were talking about Hollywood. You know what a dry, what a course that was up and up and down, and, and mm -hmm. it was, yeah, it was awesome. very cool. You know, so uh, I like it when they can stay as natural as possible. Uh, but some of the park owners and stuff are doing a good job at working in natural terrain. Uh, you know, yeah. Hollywood was probably my favorite. I really liked Hollywood. Yeah. This year, I think we're going back, aren't we? Yep. And, uh, 
Um, I I think I want to go out there like a week early and just hang out and ride and just just that drive into that park looks awesome. Yeah. So I want to I want to spend a week out there and just kind of hang out. Yep. I didn't get to take that route. I had to go the the media route, but uh, yeah, no, no doubt. Uh, let's see. Ms. Sarah Sorensen says, I see a reject fab cook-off coming in the future. Well, I volunteer to be the official taste tester or to be on the panel for that official reject uh, cook-off. So we we could make that a, a thing. We could make that hey, a big I'm, thing. Oh, man. That'd be a big deal. Uh, Jed Harper says, oh, we are going to trail ride the race buggies, or at least we hope we are. So do you do you think that uh, that thing will run long enough? I mean, you got a big enough cooling system and everything to keep that big? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you right now. Like, I've put a lot of radiators in a lot of different vehicles. And this year I bought a CR radiator, and it was like a – it was it was on the clearance it was on the clearance page but normally that's like a thirteen fourteen hundred dollar radiator and that thing will idle all day long at one hundred and forty degrees and it's got a Vizier fifty five gallon per minute water pump on it and between the water pump and the uh, radiator I I have no doubts okay. no doubts whatsoever Very I mean cool. it's legit I will never buy another cheap radiator again Very I mean cool. it is. Hands down. I mean, even when you when I picked that thing up out of the box, I mean, you just you could feel it. It was a whole different caliber. I mean, I've bought a lot of just like Northern radiators, and they're they're junk. Like I, I'll never do another cheap radiator again. I mean, it's cool, but I mean, even in the shop, I mean, it's 65, 70 degrees in here, but it, it's I have no doubts that I won't go trail ride that thing. Yeah, very cool. That that's. Pretty crazy because it's, it's not very often that you see the, the race buggies out trail riding, yeah. you know. And uh, and again, yeah. going back to us spending some time, uh, some some extended time together later on this year, you know, that is part of what I would love to be able to capture is you know a, a crowd gathering, the, yeah. the crowd that gathers when. The big bouncers are out there tearing it up, man. It's it's pretty cool. Yeah, you know, like last year, like I, I, I want seat time, and you know, we go to all these parks, and you know, there's hills that I want to hit, and and I just couldn't, I couldn't do it last because my, I would break an axle. I can, I can barely unload it off the trailer without breaking an axle. <laughs> yeah. This year, I'm telling you right now, after the races, I, I plan on running as much as I can before the races. And then after the races, I will be drinking beer, trail riding. Yep. Cool. So, yeah. Very cool. Uh, Sean Hutchins says, family recipe, and we are glad he's a part of the Reject family. Yes, sir. Lindsey James, yeah, don't worry, Dana. The radiator was on sale. <laughs> I didn't even tell her. Of course, I mean, we got separate checking accounts, but... She asked me like how much I was originally going to spend on the axles, and I, I didn't, I didn't want to tell anybody. I, mean, <laughs> you're talking about I wouldn't either. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, it, you know, I don't, I don't mind spending money on this stuff, but it was like, oh man, that is retarded. But I, I didn't. Travis, I owe Travis a lot. Yeah. I, mean, I hope buy some parts from him because he's a good guy. He'll take care of you. Yeah. Dana says, yeah, I know what on sale means. <laughs> I love it. I, I, yeah, I got a question for Dana. She went to drink, uh, she went to a uh, Mexican tonight. I told her drink enough uh, margaritas that she got warnings. So what are my odds? Let's see, let's see if we get a reaction. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Chris Clements watching Roger Bray. Um, you know that that is one of the uh, other parts about this kind of family atmosphere is, you know, I have wives and moms and uncles and aunts and everybody join us, man, and and uh, yeah. it's, it's just it's, it's such a good feeling that everybody can come on here and feel safe and yeah, you know. even you know that's the thing. Like when we drag race, like it, it was not family oriented. I mean. Dana and Charlie, she they they went to you know some of the races and stuff, but 
a lot of that stuff we were doing was just you know we were street racing a lot so it was it was at night you know i, I wouldn't get home until the sun come up but this deal was it's it's so inviting all the racers wives you know sit together and talk and hang out and yep. it's just a whole different whole different vibe yep. i mean she they enjoyed it just as much as i did and that's probably why it works yep yep i, I hear that from so many husbands slash dads you know that that have been on this show is it's just so nice to be able to uh to bring the whole family and dad can go race and we got parks like uh mid-america uh now which is by the way a sponsor of, of this show huge shout out to uh uh jason and all those guys and his team but um you know these parks are becoming like resorts you know like yeah. america's you know hard to beat in america that place is nice yeah that is very nice it's, it's only about a four hour drive for me so that's I think nothing. And, and we're going to be there a bunch this year because all of the series are going there. Uh, SRS is going there twice for a regular, like a regular season race, and then a, and then a, and then finals. Then we're going to be there for a week in July for Visions. Did you get selected for Visions? Yeah. Okay. We'll be there. All right. Which which one are you racing in? Uh, the Hill Killing. Okay. Okay. Cool. Very cool. Well, I'm I'm happy to hear that, man, because that that is going to be a big deal. That is going to be a yeah. big deal. That that could do a lot for our sport, for sure. Yeah. No, I'm looking forward to that for sure. That's going to be going to be fun. Uh, well, Dana says that your dinner is is waiting, so uh, that's that's good news, I guess. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Pete says buggy money is on a need to know basis. She don't need to know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Sarah Sorensen says, fun and family are worth way more than parts. I agree. I agree. Rachel s Rachel says, are you horny, Dana? <laughs> <laughs> Everyone wants to know, Dana. So what is it? What is yeah, I've been helping this race fuel, so I'm not ready to get yeah. it on. Yeah. Everybody's dying to know, so... <laughs> Let's hear it. Timmy Chuck says, Sarah still hates me knowing our house. Uh, Sarah still hates me knowing our house and 20 acres could be paid off if we didn't have buggies. Yeah, you don't even just put that on the back burner. You, you know, you only live once, I guess. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. You can't be buried in, in 20 acres with 20 yeah. acres, that's for sure. Uh, Lindsey James, they always got to pour salt in the womb. Yeah. Yep. Well, listen, man, we've been going uh, for over an hour now. I completely lost track of time. Uh, is there anybody that you need to give thanks to? Any, any sponsors? Any shout outs? Uh, before we wrap it up? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Rhodes Diff, definitely, hands down. I mean, they're my biggest supporter right now. Um, MS3 Pro is who I started out with on my drag car stuff. Um, the engine, man engine management system, and uh, they they came on board this year, um, got me a brand new system, and uh, I've had a lot of help. Uh, Dana putting up with me being out here. Uh, my buddy Eric James has come up and helped on the buggy. Uh, my buddy Red Dog did all the polishing. He polished my gas tank, link bars, all that stuff, getting it clean. Um, Chris Diddy's Big Block Race Shop really helped me out. Justin Holt, those guys at Reject Fab, um, uh, Tom Sewell at Fuel Injector and Development. I bought a ton of injectors from him, and he always takes care of me, uh, cleans them for me. I'll send them in, you know, twice a year to have them clean. Um, I'm sure I'm forgetting somebody, but I just I, I really appreciate all the help. I mean, I've had a lot of guys come out here, and that we've been on weekends we've been thrashing on it. I mean, it's been nonstop just. We knew Texas was coming up. <clears throat> I'm just trying to get it done. Yeah. Well, on behalf of all the fans, man, you know I'm a mega fan anyway, and I appreciate it. I know, and I'm, I'm sure that everybody watching uh, now and in the future will appreciate uh, all the hard work that you've put into this, and, and just to bring it back down to Texas and beat the snot out of it, 
but uh, I, I know that that's what you're really looking forward to. And, I, uh, it, you know, it may sound counterintuitive, but if you haven't been to a race, man, just come to a race and you'll know exactly why. <laughs> you'll know exactly yeah. why. So. I know. I can't, I'm going to hear it on the chip for sure. Yep. So I'm going to get on it. Yep, no doubt. Uh, Timmy Chuck says, Reject Fab Fritz. Reject Fab Fritz, yeah. <laughs> uh, talking about... Um, Oh man, uh, Dex's win at uh, finals, and when he just kept yeah. thanking Reject Fab, yeah, that was that was epic. Uh, let's see, Roger says, let's see the inside of that rocket ship. Is there is there a way to bring the camera over there? Or if uh, yeah, I can try. I don't know. I'll yeah, try don't, to get a signal. That's all right. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I, I would. Yeah, I, I got. I got a picture of it. I started, up. but I don't want to scare crows. I, uh, <laughs> I, uh, I got a picture of it up the the overhead shot. So I got that yeah. up there right now, and, and uh, so they can they can kind of check yeah, that this, out. This building, I got the the metal ceiling and the roof and all that. I always signal quick. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Um, all right. Let's see. Rachel Sanders, Margarita Knight, Charlie Brown Jr., and Dana Wood Brown soon. Uh, yep, I, I, I'm I'm looking forward to, to coming and meeting y'all, man. I, I'm looking forward to coming and hanging out. Um, <laughs> Lin, Lindsay says Dana's about to get it. Big Daddy's on the way to the house. That's right. <laughs> that is, Big Daddy's on the way home, baby. I'll be up there in a minute. Yeah. And she, <laughs> Dana says, "Ah, oh, hell." <laughs> uh travis says uh, travis Rhodes says thank you mr charlie brown jr um and uh that is about it so um man i, I appreciate it again just just like we always when i when i leave off um going into this season if you want to come back on the show man tell us how Tell us how the buggy's going. I'm, I'm, I'm stoked that we've got kind of a baseline now going into it buggy's brand new let's let's hear from you again when you're standing on that podium or after you've got a few races under your belt and and you've had uh, a chance to work out some of the bugs you know definitely looking forward to having you back on the show and, and then hanging out with you uh, obviously at the races and later on in the year yeah you know i think you gotta have a goal no matter what you're doing whether it's work or life whatever so yep. somebody needs to tell tammy don't add on to your trophy shelf because right up here that's my goal this year is to is to take some of those trophies away from him. Yeah, so good for you, man. See, hopefully, hopefully next year we got a trophy shelf up there, and there's a few of them hanging there. I have, I have always said it since I've been into the sport. We need guys like you that are coming in that are just willing to dive in head first, and then not only are you fully committed in that sense, but you are also meticulous in how you build things, and you know you, you uh, uh, really look forward to seeing more um of you out racing this year man as i do a lot of the other drivers as well because like i said you know you can't make it easy on timmy you can't make it easy yeah. on timmy and that's why he is as good as he is that's why he yeah. is as good as he is yeah, he's had a lot of he's fast but he's had a lot of people nipping at his heels for a lot of years so yeah it is uh it is you, you are definitely going to be hang time is a perfect name for that buggy that's all i'm saying because you, you know, you know, you, yeah, I got a lot to learn, but I normally learn fast. I learn from my mistakes. At least so. you have a good platform to learn on now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, Hands down. In a different mindset. So I'm excited, dude. We're, we're going to have a good year this year for sure. Yeah, definitely. All right, brother. I will talk to you soon. Okay. I'll see you in just a f about a week or so. Yep. I'll we'll see you next weekend. I'll be there. I'll be there early. All right, man. I'll talk to you soon. All right. Yep. All right, Mr. Charlie Brown Jr., y'all. I appreciate you hanging out. Uh, I know we went a little bit over what uh, we normally do, but um, uh, I think that we are going to see some straight-up hill killing from hang time this year from Charlie Brown, and, and I'm excited, man. Great, great family, great, uh, you know, his dad, is a huge supporter of, of what he's doing and, and I know uh, his family is as well and and like I said I, I really look forward to seeing him racing but I also look forward to just uh, getting to know them uh, better as the year progresses so I'm excited 
All right, y'all, I'm going to get out of here. Jed Harper looks awesome, Charlie. Can't wait to meet up and see you in person. I agree. Bebo in the house. See y'all. Thanks, Nick. Yes, sir. Have a good night. Um, Pete says, super cool reject buggy. Yep, looking forward to seeing yours out there as well, Pete. Well, listen, uh, everybody have a great night. I uh, am still waiting to hear back from uh, Mr. Slauson. So if if he gives me the go-ahead to go live, I usually don't go live Thursday, Friday, Saturday. But uh, if he gives me the nod, then, um, you know, just just be watching out. We'll be, uh, be coming up live here um, with uh, the three-time king of the Hammers, uh, Mr. Randy Slauson. So I'm excited about that. All right, everybody. I will see y'all soon.